if there was one guy in your game that had position on you every time the two of you played a pot? You dread playing against him because hand after hand, when the flop hits the table, you have to go first. Turn and river, same drill. He gets to see what you do before he has to do what he does. It's frustrating as hell and definitely not profitable. You can be that guy. You can be the dreaded one. Here's a quote from Elements of Poker on the topic of acting last. Acting last is like taking a drink of water. We don't have to understand why it's good for us to know that it is, and the benefits are unaffected by our understanding of them. Are you acting last the same amount as your opponents? More? Less? I believe that if you raise your ALP, your act last percentage, your score will go up. Try this. Next time you play, keep track of how many streets you act last on and how many you don't. Let's say you're on the button and you see the flop. You call a bet on the flop and you fold on the turn. That scores as two last to act streets, the flop and the turn. Or let's say you see the flop from the small blind and you end up check folding the river. That would count as three not last to act streets, the flop, the turn, and the river. The hard part is the folding. To turn the positional tide on your opponents in a big and permanent way, you're going to need to fold the blinds a lot more than you do now. And you'll need to open pots less often than you do now. And fold to three bets out of position more often than you do now. If you're thinking, I couldn't tighten up even if I wanted to. I just don't have the folding discipline. Well, I can relate to that. I used to get so mad at my teachers. They were so flagrantly unemotional and unsympathetic and unrealistic. In their books and essays, they'd tell me about how tight I needed to play. Play tight all the time and you will win the maximum. I knew they were right, but no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't maintain the discipline. And if I complained about the pain of poker and my hundred ways to tilt, and about how it was impossible for me to do what they said because I was an action junkie, the advice they gave was predictable and useless. The solution is simple, they said. Don't leak. Play with a bot brain like we do. And good luck with that. Arg! And yet, here I am, about to say the same thing to you. If you want to earn a good, reliable income from this game, you have to fold a lot before the flop, consistently. Where I differ from my teachers is that I do know your pain. I understand the pain of knowing that you're seeing way too many flops than you think you should and being powerless to stop it. Here's a hand a client sent to me. It clarifies the difference between common pre-flop play and positionally sensitive pre-flop play. Bob wrote, I was playing 2-5 no limit hold'em at Aria. I had 6-5 suited in the big blind. One player limped for 5. The small blind raised to 20. I called and the limper called. The stacks were 1,000. Bob had sent me this hand so that we could discuss his post-flop decisions. And we did, at length. Then we circled back to pre-flop. Bob had assumed that his call of the small blind's raise with 6-5 suited was a no-brainer. I convinced him otherwise with this rundown. When the small blind raised to 20, you had three options. Call, three bet, or fold. If being last to act with your drawing hands is your prime objective, then calling the small blind's raise is not an option. You must raise or fold, and here's why. If you call the raise, the limper will almost always call two. And in that case, you will not be last to act after the flop which will lower your act last percentage. Therefore, you should not call. You could three bet in this spot. This pattern is sanctioned by the position gods because if your re-raise drives the limper out, you are now promoted to last and your act last percentage rises. And then you could fold. This is a good choice because it guarantees that you will not be not last. 
I didn't hear from Bob for a couple months, and then came this letter. I'm demoralizing my opponents. You should have seen this one guy. It was late at night, shorthanded one too. He was a non-chopper. Three times it came down to blind versus blind, and all three times I folded. First time, no fanfare. Second time, the big blind kind of slammed his cards down. The third time I folded, he pushed my cards back to me and tossed a chip into the pot to complete my blind. You have to play one eventually, he said, and I was thinking, actually, I don't. Not out of position. Like I said, I am demoralizing these guys. It's like I'm a leprechaun and they know there's no way they can catch me. Bob's words captured not only the joy of lastness, but also the effect. As your act class percentage rises, so will your confidence. Weak opponents will become fearful and confused. Strong opponents will feel frustrated and disarmed. And all you did was wait for your turn to be last. Thank mm -hmm. you.